Um, as we are duplicating courses out into the live session sections, um, and pardon me if somebody I'm showing somebody's course who is actually attending this session. I'm I'm not picking on anybody in particular at all. I just went to find samples of what it is you might see. When we copy courses from one semester from one uh, from a math term master or another section into a new semester section. Um, we will often see this blue bar that says there are five folders that were turned in enabled in the previous course offering. Um, all you need to do at that point, well, the first thing you need to do at that point in time is click this re-enable button. I'm going to not do that in this particular instructor's course so that they still see this when they come in. Oftentimes what happens when you do that is that that blue bar goes away, but you'll come back five or ten minutes later and you'll see all of these messages that say error enabling turn it in. What we've discovered is that in this new integration setup, um, turn it in is not happy with us if we have a couple of things happen. One of them is that you have a problem occasionally, an error, um, if you have instructions that are longer than a thousand characters. And sometimes there are also some issues with particular date settings. So let me address each of those um, separately. Um, I'm going to come in to edit this folder. And in this case, I probably will be saving this so that the instructor actually gets one Dropbox already enabled for them. Um, and what happens when I come to the Turnitin tab, and you'll notice that's the first change is that Turnitin now has its own tab. So everything that used to be part of this properties tab is now just on the turn it in tab. And you'll see a message that says unable to create turn it in assignment, blah, 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 contact your administrator. The part I want you to notice is that you may see a show error details message. And all you need to do is click on it to see what the message is. And in this case, turn it in could not be created because the instructions were longer than turn it in wants to accept. Now we can, we have a workaround for this and it's a pretty simple workaround um, in, you know, in speaking terms of, of what workarounds could have been. Um, what you do is go to the properties tab, find all of these instructions and I'm just going to do a command or control A to select all. I'm on a Mac so if I say command speak that's just Max, but same happens with a control on a PC. Um, and I'm going to cut those instructions. Now, if I'm worried about saving them, I may open up a Word document and just paste them in there for, to know that I have them saved in two places. But the fact is they'll say, they will stay on my clipboard whether or not I do that. But that's, that's not a bad safety measure just to put it somewhere. And now that I don't have any instructions in here, I can come back to this Turn It In tab and I'm going to try to enable turn it in again. Now, it's taking just long enough here. Oop, it enabled. Okay, so that did a good thing. Now I'm going to come back to this properties tab, come back to down to the instructions, and you'll remember I said those instructions stay on my clipboard. So if I paste, I can paste back in those instructions, save, and if I close, you'll see that that re removed that error. So, you know, it, things could be worse. It's pretty easy to just do that to quickly re-enable those drop boxes. Um, this is the one thing we're looking at moving forward about how we're going to manage. So I'm not going to tell you that you're always and forever going to have to do that with instructions that are longer than a thousand characters. At this moment, for this semester, we know that that's what it needs to be. Um, you know, we're hoping to find a fix for that, but that is still to be determined. I'm not guaranteeing you one thing, one way or another. <laughs> um, sometimes what else will happen, and I don't have a specific example of this set up, but just let me warn you about another thing that might happen. Um, there's two other errors that you might see when you're doing this. Sometimes this error will report as um, inaccurately set dates. And what you would do at that point in time is come into your restrictions and make sure that you have set a start 
due and end date. Now, let me be clear, you can have the due and end date be identical, but sometimes Turnitin needs all three of those to be set. Um, if you want them able to start something from the very beginning of the semester, you could set that to a date prior to the start of semester and that would be acceptable. If you never want the Dropbox to close, you could set that end date far, far, far in the future and that would be fine. It just needs some data points in those three boxes, in those three fields. Um, and then come back and try again to enable Turnitin. Um, one other error that might come up in very rare circumstances, but I want you to know that we've seen it. Um, if for some reason your user account has no email account associated with it, which is very rare, um, sometimes that will throw an error because Turnitin does require that you have an email address in your account. Um, I have not seen, but I have heard reports that on occasion there have been problems with non-EDU email accounts. So if you see an issue with not having a user email on your account, um, please put in a Prof Help ticket because we will have to take a look at your user account, but um, it's easily fixed. Um, I just want you to know we've seen it. It's an easy fix, but we need to know about it though. You need to contact Prof Help and we'll take care of that. Um, do we have any questions so far? Okay, so far so good. Um, my lightning was faster than I thought it was going to be. Um, oh, and one other thing that we've had as a question. Um, I'm going to go back to this Dropbox where I had already enabled turn it in so that we see all of the options. Um, there are some people who like to use, um, oh, I'm sorry, let me, let me hit this really quickly. Um, choose whether or not you want your users to be able to see their Turnitin similarity scores in their Dropbox folders. Um, as an instructor myself, I prefer to do that, but I believe that that's a discussion you can have with you and your chair. Um, I don't believe there's any set policy as a school on how we do that, um, but to have that discussion with your chair. I find value on, in having that, having the students see the same information I see um, when I go to have a discussion about whether or not um, um, I'm sorry, whether or not um, you turn that on as a discussion. Do make sure that it says automatic originality checking on all submissions. We've seen some circumstances where it defaults to this. It's an odd circumstance. We're not sure what's causing that, but um, because of um, you want to treat all of your students the same, you don't want to be different with one student than you are with another, we always want you to do automatic check. If you're doing originality checking, do it on everybody. Um, and Candice, I see you're asking about this current date for grade mark. Um, this is just a date when it's available to learners. Um, it defaults to today's date. The only time I've seen this be a problem is if your end date is still set to something prior to today's date. That can cause a problem with it. Um, but, you know, if you ever see that be a problem, just come and make sure that your release of grade mark is within the date range somewhere between your start date and your end date. Um, I'm sorry, actually, I guess this one's showing up as prior to. Oh, no, it showed up as the start date. I'm sorry, that's what it defaulted to. Um, and I will go through and, and just reiterate again about how you clear that um, those errors, which is let me just run through the steps. I'm not going to show you the whole process again. If it's saying something about too many characters, you come in, you cut the instructions, come over to turn it in, click the enable button. Once it enables, go back to the properties tab, paste back in those instructions if they're more than a thousand characters, and you can save and close at that point in time and it will be um, enabled. Um, occasionally you'll see things about date restrictions. Again, just make sure all three of the date fields on the restrictions tab are filled in. Um, I have not had many problems with this grade mark available to learners 
information. Um, it can be useful if you are teaching a class and it takes you, you know, several days to grade papers, which is not at all unusual. Um, you can choose to release that grade mark to all of your students all on the same day. So that's why that exists. Not at all a bad concept, um, but not, not one you're required to use. Again, just an option. Um, so I'm going to save and close. Okay. Um, in the Q&A panel, apparently I have a question here. Um, can you mention the previous set settings might transfer? Yes, that's one of the things, I'm sorry, Teresa, I had mentioned that earlier. This, we're, we're sort of in an investigation stage right now. This being the first semester where we've really copied under this new setup, we're still trying to discover all of the corners of exactly how things get carried out when they copy. Um, we have found that sometimes default settings do not copy as we expect them to do. So I really do strongly recommend that once you enable Turnitin, you verify that you have, um, you, whether or not you want to allow learners to see similarity scores. I like doing that if you're an instructor who doesn't. Um, again, that's a conversation between you and your chair. Um, and do make sure that automatic originality checking is happening on all submissions. That's one that's just a, it's a student, student fairness issue. Um, and then there's one other option I'm not seeing. Oh, more options in Turnitin. That's what I'm looking for. Sorry, it was right in front of me, so I didn't see it. Um, I'm going to click on this more options in Turnitin just to show you some other things that come up when you go over to the Turnitin site. Ah, and it's still yelling about having too many instructions. Let me make sure I have the instructions for this Dropbox over here. It does get fussy about having a thousand, instru a thousand characters. And we're looking at what happens with that. We're not sure what the end result on that's going to be, but that one could hang with us for a minute. All right, I'm going to come back over here to turn it in and say more options in turn it in. Um, you could put instructions here. Again, this is empty now because I cut those instructions and it had none. Um, allow submissions of any file type. Um, I would be cautious about changing that. There's a certain file types that it will accept and, and it doesn't, setting that to no doesn't change that. And by the way, they've got really good help files. Let me. Um, I, I would not recommend changing that. Just leave that set to yes. Max grade, you'll notice it's picked up on the max grade of the Dropbox already. Start date, due date feedback release, and then optional settings is the one I want to get to. Um, again, your course, whether or not you accept late submissions is entirely in you know, the setup of your course and how you teach. Um, I'm going to get to this more later because I'm going to show you how to do a, a, a uh, create your own, uh, check your draft Dropbox where students can submit a paper without having it show up as 100% plagiarized when they submit it to a different Dropbox. If I don't get have time to get through that today, because I'm looking at the time being 118 right now, this is the critical setting on that. When you set up a new Dropbox, deselect submitting that to, um, oh, I'm sorry, that's a compare. There's a, a there it is. I'll get down to it in a minute. Um, originality reports, generate reports immediately. I would say um, you probably want to look at generate reports immediately. Resubmissions are allowed until the due date. Um, that's, again, your choice, your class. Exclude bibliography. You can do that as you're checking it if the originality is too high and you want to see if that adjusts it. I'm not going to be able to take you through how to use Turnitin in this session, but um, one of the things I want to get to is, okay, submissions to this assignment will be stored in, if you're doing a check your draft, be sure to choose do not store the submitted papers because that way a student can submit it, can see their originality report, and it won't be stored so it scores 100% or 99% or 95% um, the next time they submit that. 
So that's the critical setting right there. Do not store the submitted papers. Okay. Um, we are not yet ready to work with peer mark, so as exciting as that concept sees, sounds if you've ever used it, um, we're not ready for it. Um, the one thing that a lot of instructors like is using the grammar checking. So if you want to use the grammar checking, select that, select how sophisticated the language needs to be for your course. Um, you know, whether you will accept both Engl United States or Great Britain English, <laughs> uh, and what it is you want them to check, and whether or not you want these to be saved as your defaults for the future. Now, when you're setting this up, that's assigned, that is connected to your instructor account. So um, what I set up as my instructor defaults would not necessarily change what Liz's instructor defaults would be. So you can save those as defaults safely and not worry about affecting anybody but yourself. Um, I'm obviously not going to ch change that. And I'm also not going to hit save on this because I don't want to change anything for this instructor's Dropbox. <laughs> Um, so, but I would have hit save, and it would have brought me back to this screen. And once again, if I was done with all of that, I would come back in here and paste in their instructions, save. Um, and Candice, yes, I see your question about would it be good to have an attached file of instructions? That is definitely one of the solutions we're investigating. We're going to have to have, after semester start, we're going to have a conversation with um, the um, instructional team, um, both the, the ADs the, um, and the instructional design team, um, and find what we feel is the best solution. Um, and it may not be a one-size-fits-all solution, so there's, that includes one possibility. Some of them may just be, you know, it's, it's showing 1,010 characters, can we take 10 characters out? And that fixes it. Um, so there will be a number of different solutions. If, uh, Janice, if we tell Turnitin to not store the submitted papers in the student repository, does that mean the paper will be admitted from the Turnitin check should a student plagiarize in a future term? In a check your draft, yes, that is exactly what that means. Um, I'm, I would only use that don't store the paper on a Dropbox that you set up specifically so a student can check their paper before they turn it in for a grade. Um, I often have that kind of a check your draft drop box in a class that I never look at and I tell very clearly, I tell students, I will never look at your paper in this one. Submit it, do what you're going to do, you can check your draft and it's not going to affect anything. Um, they often just want to be able to look at what their paper is going to look like in turn it in before it gets, before they submit it for a grade. Um, as an instructor, I felt comfortable doing that with them. Um, there's some courses where you may choose to not do that. Not at all a requirement, just an option I show you. So we're pretty much three minutes past our time, so um, let's see what questions we've got. There's some Q&A, okay. Let me, sorry, I'm opening up my Q&A panel and working with touch screen is making that difficult. <laughs> Um, if the instructor hits that save as default for the very first folder, will that automatically be set up on the other, other folders in that course that way? Um, I haven't tested that, Therese. My guess is that each folder is going to have been set up with, if Turnitin is enabled, the folders are going to retain however they were originally set up. If Turnitin is not enabled, as that instructor goes in with their instructor account and enables it, it should go to their defaults. Uh, again, I haven't tested that, but I have a reasonable level of confidence that that is how that would happen. And it certainly would hold on any new Dropboxes if an instructor set up new Dropboxes in their course, which doesn't happen a lot, but is happens sometimes. And has the grammar, check, grammar feature been upgraded? It looks more sophisticated. Um, again, I'm sorry, I don't know um, what Turnitin has done with that grammar check on there. And this is really a, a within D2L change on how, how this integration is expressed. Um, I don't know if that reflects changes on the Turnitin site. I will mention, if you want to learn more about how to use Turnitin, if you go to just turnitin.com, um, they have a remarkably sophisticated um, 
they've got really good training. So I'm going to go here quickly. Yep. That happens sometimes to all of us, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. If you come over here to support um, and just scroll down and find training, their instructor training over here is really good. Um, in all the places where I've been responsible for creating or delivering training, when it came to turn it in, I always set instructors over to look at this. Now, ignore a lot of the stuff about creating a use, user profile or adding a class. Let's just look at you know the information on viewing originality reports, leaving feedback. Um, those are probably the ones you'd want to look at. Turnitin has very good training. And, you know, frankly, if you are, if you have students who are having trouble understanding what they're reading, you can ha send them over to how to view an originality report, how to view their instructor feedback, you know? Don't reinvent the wheel when they've got good training. Thank you so much, Kristen. Um, as she mentioned, we are at 126 at this point. So um, I want to thank everybody for coming. And you all had great questions. Thank you for um, volunteering those for the benefit of everyone else. I did record this session today, uh, so it will be available in a week or so um, on our website. And I can send you that, I can email you that link directly quicker than that if you would like to email me. Um, so we will hang out just for another minute or so here and see if anyone has any other questions. Otherwise, thank you very much for coming and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Hope I didn't talk too fast. Both animals, but we're about to open outlook and